Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am going to do a wig styling video. So what I'm doing is I need to restyle a wig kind of previously how I did before so somebody can use it for a photo shoot and the one that I'm going to be doing is going to be my Marie Antoinette wig so I'll pop a picture of that right here so you can have a look. So I'm going to be recreating that again now today. So now I sadly have to take this out. Sam was loving his new do, but we'll give you a new one, don't you worry girl, we'll get you sorted out, not a bother. What I'll do is I'll get this washed, I'll come back to you when I have it washed and when I'm going to dry it, and we'll continue on from there. So, as I said in this video, I'm just going to be restyling, I'm going to be showing you my techniques, I'm going to be showing you different things that I do to make it easier for myself. I usually use my camera tripod to do the wigs. So I'm going to have to try finding to find something else to mount the wig head on now. So we'll see how that works out as well. But yeah, it all should be fine. So <laughs> um, without further ado, let's just get into this video because I'm just rambling on. So here's what the wig looks like after I brushed it out, as you can see there's a lot of volume in it, I had backcombing in it and the style gave it a nice quiff held in it as well. To be fair, you could always just brush it out and restyle it and turn it into a new look. It's a shame that I have to wash this out because since it is so big I feel like there's so much I would have been able to do with it. but. I need to wash this wig, so I'm going to stop rambling on. Stop rambling on, girl. Okay. Okay, so pretty much, I'm just going to go through the supplies that I'm going to be using to do this wig. Um, I don't have got to be hairspray at the moment, so I'm just using cheap Aldi hairspray. It's like one euro or something, I'm not too sure. It works really well. But it's, it's not the best hairspray, but it works really well for doing heavy styling if you use a hair dryer to assist you when actually setting it. So it does the job done and I usually use it on my wigs if I want them to have a bit more of a natural hair look and not so much of a glued finish. Um, what you're going to need is you're going to need a backcombing brush. One with a toot is usually preferable, it'll just help you while you're sectioning the way through and this will be helping us get this big voluminous bump that we're going for. Get yourself some sectioning clips like this one or like these. I really should have more of these, I used to have more but now I only have two so it takes me forever to style the wigs. You're going to need wire mesh rollers for when we're doing the rolls up in the back so we can roll it up, we can steam it and then we can pull it out, pin it and set it with some hairspray. So I, I only have about 12 of them, I should have 40 for one whole wig being curled but I only have 12 because I got scammed by the internet. A big paddle brush because this is going to be your main brush for brushing out the hair. I'm going to use like stuffers so I have this old lace uh, this old hard front wig that I had cut loads of hair off of so the last time I did it I just teased this into a really dense ball and then with the hair underneath I teased it and put it in there and I pinned this on and then covered it over with layering hair so anything to stuff it if you can get hair you can use foam it's completely up to yourself I just used this because I had it lying around and as well I'm also going to be using a curling wand at some stage just because if I want to do some little curves down here in the side I find they do look better when I use the wand instead of using the wire mesh if I want quicker results. I got this one in pennies it only heats up to 150 degrees and my wigs from Webster Wigs are heat resistant up to 180 degrees so this is perfectly fine to use on it. I have a bit of elastic for when I attach the wig to the wig head just so when I put the lace down I can pin the, the pins through this elastic in through the lace and while I stretch it it presses the lace flat so when you apply it to your head even without gluing that it does blend perfectly to your skin and as well I'm going to be using lots and lots and lots of just regular bobby pins. 
So that's everything I'm going to need. Um, next of all, I'm going to get to pinning the wig to the head and drying it and then we'll get into styling and sectioning and everything like that. So I'm pretty much just going to start by sectioning off the hair. So I did a big section on top. I did two medium sections then going down, leaving me with one small section at the end. Um, I'm going to blow dry it just because when I blow dry it and then brushing it, it helps me straighten it along the way and it also helps me get the teasing out of the base of the hair as well, moving up in smaller sections at a time. So pretty much what I'm doing is I'm just giving it a quick brush just to get the base of the knots out before I go to start blow drying it. So now I'm going to get my hair dryer and I'm going to grab an attachment for the hair dryer as well, something that's kind of like a narrow that concentrates the air and I'm going to put it onto a medium heat and I'm going to put it on a full blast. Maybe a low blast to start just to see. And just as I go through each section, once I think it's nearly completely dry, I take the section as a whole and just start from the base and work my way up the hair just to get any of the remaining knots out. Just because the smoother you get it now, the easier it's going to be for you when you're trying to restyle it. So I usually work from one side to the other side and then once I get to the other side, I'll follow back in the next track. Um, I just find this the quickest way for me to work. It just seems to have a nice system to it. Always starting at the base of the hair and putting the knots down so you're not ripping or breaking the hair at the base of the wig. And again, I'm just going to blow dry and I'll be back to you in a second. So if you're thinking of doing a bigger style, you don't want to be starting with something that's so sleek or so slick and so clean. You want it, even though it's freshly cleaned, you still want it to have a bit of grit, a bit of give to it. And I'm not really too worried about it down here anyway, because with this part of the wig, I will be putting the back part all the way up to here back into rollers again, just to get curls again. So this will give a nice effect for the curls. They'll be nice and fluffy and wispy. So now what I'm going to do is I have the top section here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working in sections like going straight across, then going straight up on either side and then until I reach the front here now again. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do the sectioning. So I, I'm just going to do the sections first and then I'll show you each piece then afterwards. Two inches at the front of the whole leg sectioned off first to start and then I've taken two one inch wide side pieces from here down to the base below the ear and I've taken the two of them and pinned them ahead. I've also taken another two inch covering allowance for when I do the kind of beehive effect. On either side I went straight down diagonally across into a triangle shape on either side and just pin that forward and then I have this piece which I'm going to tease and back home and then I have the piece to cover it and the piece that I'm going to put in all the rollers down at the end. So what I like to do when I'm back homing is I take a section and I try to take a straight section. I, not like, I don't want to take a big like round bit of hair because it won't tease properly and it'll just put knots into the hair instead. So what you want to do is go in and curve out like a C to pull the hair back because as you can see there now it creates a cloud but with this hair I'm pretty much just going to try make it as fluffy as I possibly can because I'm going to be putting the other hair over it to create the hive shape. So I'm just going to work down this now in sections till I get to the bottom and then I'm going to pin on the beehive then afterwards. So what I'm going to do now that I have the whole thing tease is I'm just going to go back in and all these little bits at the end I'm going to tease together just to make a nice dense ball shape on top of the head. So 
now what we're going to do is we're going to try and mold this into the shape that we want as our base and we're just going to put it in with one or two pins and then using more pins we're going to attach the stacked wig on top. So now what I'm going to do is I have my separate hair piece that I've teased up. Just tease it up as big as you can possibly get it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay, I'm going to lay the cap of the wig over the other piece and it'll just help add volume and it'll help add density as well to make sure that it is going to hold its shape. You get your pin, push it into through the wig, into the other one at a diagonal angle and what we'll do is we'll get another pin and go in across it so it's like an X. And it's going to do the same thing then on the back. So now we have this absolute monstrosity. So what I'm going to do is with my brush, I'm just going to brush the hair and try to get it into the shape that I want it. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and overlay different layers to smooth it out. So as you can see, I'm after sculpting the whole top into kind of like a beehive shape. Um, this is the front of the wig at the moment, so you can see as we're getting it, it's nice and round, but it's not over spilling onto the edges down here or anything and um, so what I've done is I've just put pins in to secure it and now what I'm going to do is I have all this hair in the edges and I'm just going to go ahead and lay it all over top and get it nice and smooth so you can't see any of this rattiness that I have up here so I'm just going to start and go in with my teasing brush and I'm just going to do a light layer of base teasing just so when I do put it back up that it does look a bit more full and does take up a little bit of space. So just really lightly with the brush, I'm just gonna go and smooth out the other side. And what I'm gonna do is get my hairspray, spray the hive, spray the back of the hair. Turn this around so you can see it a bit better. And just get it with the comb and just lie it over the top and you can just separate it out with the tooth as you comb then just to make sure it's nice and spread and once you have it on there just get some more hairspray spray it in and just catching any flyaways that you have and putting them up into the hive this is a style that requires a lot of hairspray so I do recommend going out and buying yourself a brand new can of hairspray because you deserve it not because I'm telling you. So I'm going to start with the back section after I've done the front and I'm going to lie it back up this way. Just taking the pin out that I used to separate it a while ago. Getting my brush. The paddle brush is usually better for getting through knots I think than a teasing brush but a teasing brush is very good for smoothing. So what you want to do here is we're just going to take a thin section and I'm just going to do the same step and I'm going to do one layer and I'll go in and cover it up with more then at the end so I'll be back to you then. A good amount of hairspray. Um, don't skimp out in the hairspray, this will fall apart because none of this is done with pins. It's all just spraying and sticking the hair together. So now I have kind of just went around and did my first layer of overlaying hairs to back doesn't need to be perfect we'll be putting more hair over it in a minute but it does really help if you try to keep it as clean as you can while you're going so what I'm gonna do now is I'm probably gonna take another layer off the back first just a very thin layer to cover up over the few little gaps that I have here hairspray so one thing I really don't like about this hairspray is the mist is really really fine so fine that it kind of just sits in the air as well like I can see it floating in my bedroom it's why it would be why I prefer the got to be glue because it's not it doesn't give as much kickback you know 
Here we have it like this now. So I'm just gonna go back in with another layer of hairspray. And with the back of my brush, I'm just gonna smooth it. And I'm gonna get one of these rollers, the wire mesh ones. So you can get these from, I think it's, it's Sally's. Uh, you can get them from Sally Services, uh, the salon shop. And um, these are three quarter of an inch rollers and I find they're best for wigs. See the little mesh there? You can put pins through that for wigs so you can hold them in much easier and since it doesn't have any velcro, it doesn't catch on the hair either. So I can put a link in the description for where you can actually buy these and you can buy them in loads of different sizes and then you can just use steam on the wig instead of using heat so the wig doesn't get so damaged. But I'm gonna be using these as a so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this section here, get a little brush, get a little spray, and so what I do is I get the roller, I drag it down the hair just to smooth it, and once I have about a quarter of it left, what I like to do is, or if the wig is layered just before the first layer, I get it, I wrap it around once, and then I wrap it across, and bring it back to the middle, and just making sure all the hairs are hidden away at the ends, and then I will start to roll. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna get a, I, I'm just gonna get a regular sewing pin, and what I'm doing is just getting it and popping it in through the wire mesh just to hold that curl tight in place and it'll give an effect like this and I'll be able to maneuver the curl however I want and then set it. I'm gonna move on to the other side now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a curling wand and I'm just gonna give these bits here on the side a curl. Let me turn it so I think you can see it a bit better. So as I said, I rest that against the head when I'm waiting for the curl to set. Just making sure to keep the hair nice and straight. I curled it the way that I didn't want to, so I'm just going to go with that now. So the hair feels nice and hot now, so you're just going to Loosen it up, roll it out. I'm gonna get one of these wire mesh rollers and just again, I'm gonna wrap the hair back around it just to help hold that ringlet shape. Some people think that they can't curl wigs, it's just that they're not waiting enough time for the wig to actually cool down after they've heated it so the curls end up coming out terribly. onto the back of the wig. And with this section, I just want it to be one big curl so it all curls together, but it has a nice density so it's gonna give a really nice finish. It is ready to come out and off of the wand. Now pretty much what I am going to do is I'm going to work on the bottom piece down here. So I have however many rollers, hopefully they're enough. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put all of these into the rollers and slide the roller out just to get the shape of the victory roll. And I'm going to get some hairpins as well just to hold it in place. I only want to use maximum one whole can. 
As ridiculous as that sounds, I have another kind just in case. Just do the whole first row and show you how to do that, and then I'm gonna do the rest of it off camera. So I'll show you that there now, and then we'll have a finished wig. What I find is helpful is counting the rows on the tracks you have to know how much hair you need to use for each roll. So I have six, which means I'm gonna do Start by sectioning off the tracks. And if you want to get rid of the frizz at the end, just hold it in the palm of your hand like this and brush it over your hand. So I'm going to start by doing the most in the top and work down to the lowest number. So if I want two on the bottom, above that I'll do possibly like three. And then about that I might do four. I might not use all the top rollers. Then you get that really nice victory roll look, which can only be viewed from the side, but if you pin it down to the wig right, you can use it to cover over the edges. Just be careful pulling them out because you can pull the hair out of the middle, so do hold the roll tightly. And then once I take the wire mesh rollers off, I just go in and secure the hairline with some hairspray. I find this also helps when I'm like putting on the wigs that if I get a decent amount of hairspray here, it helps hold the lace to the shape of the head. So I'm just going to leave those two in there like that and it just ensure that once all the hairspray is dry and everything is set, that everything is going to hold. But as you can see, I'm pressing down on it pretty hard and it's pretty firm now. So there we have it, this is the finished wig. I'm really happy with the results. I'm just gonna leave these two rollers in here for the next day or so just to let it set, just to give it that nice curve. Um, I'll probably give it one more spray of hairspray before I pass it on for the shoot. But I would suggest using something like Got To Be as like a finishing spray over everything because it does have a much stronger hold than this one here. I ended up going through a can and a quarter of hairspray for a style like this and it says firm hold and it's, it doesn't do what it says on the tin is what I'm trying to say here. So final thoughts that I have, is there anything that I would have changed? No, because I'm doing the style for a second time. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's a whole lot bigger this time than it was the last time but you get the idea of how to stack a wig and how to do a beehive with it um, as well as doing victory rolls and, and using a curling wand as well so I feel like I covered a good amount of information for you on how I actually style wigs if there's anything else that you want to see just please do let me know down in the comment section below or else you can send me a personal message on Instagram as well drop into my DMs, let me know what you want to see I'm happy to make whatever you want to see so please do let me know um, as I said, you can find me on Instagram, you can my, I'll pop my face up here at robin underscore hearts underscore and there'll be a link down in my bio as well. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it just fuels me to want to do more with my channel. Please hit that notification bell down below if you want to get notifications every time that I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!